Suppose you have a point here. You can describe how to get to that point from the origin in two ways. One is using rectangular coordinates, in which case you say, um, go x units horizontally, and then another y number of units vertically, and you will get to that point. Okay, that's um, using rectangular coordinates. Or you could describe how to get to that point using polar coordinates, and you can say, all right, go radially out so many units, and then rotate a degree of such and such, and you can get to that point. So both are equally um, correct in describing where that point is located. Now, how do we combine the two of them? So you know what the values x and y are, okay? They're the number of units that you travel horizontally and vertically. Um, in the world of polar coordinates, the distance that you move away from the origin is defined as r. So r is the distance that you are away from the origin. So it's like a, it's like a bird's flight path, right? From the origin, you just fly directly there. That's the radius. Now, if we draw the radius to this point, okay, we're describing the polar coordinate. And then if we write the, if, if we draw the x and y components, we're now describing it in rectangular coordinates. Um, is there any way that those two are related? Well, let's see. If we know this angle theta, and we know that this is r, then how could we describe x? x is r cosine theta. Well, how do we describe y? y is r sine theta. Now, if you have x and y, is there any way to find this diagonal side? How? Pythagorean theorem. So let's just write that down here. x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, right? Well, what did we just say x was? r cosine theta. So this is r cosine theta squared plus what was y? r sine theta squared. Now let's see, is this equal to r squared? Well, let's see. r squared cosine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta. Is this equal to r squared? Let me just factor out an r here, um, um, an r squared, and I get cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. Is this r squared? What's cosine squared plus sine squared? One. So r squared is r squared. Okay? And this is it. This is how rectangular and polar coordinates are related. There is no other way. All right? This is where, you know, the arc Pythagorean identity comes from, right? Because now if r is equal to 1, right, then we have 1 cosine theta and 1 sine theta, and we know that cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta must equal to 1. That's where it comes from. Where would the radius be 1? Where on which diagram would the radius be 1? How big is the radius of a unit circle? One. And this is cosine theta, and this is sine theta, and the square of sine theta and cosine theta equal to one. All right? Okay. So now, so this is what we're going to use in order to convert polar to rectangular coordinates, these are the relationships we're going to use. We're just going to substitute r cosine theta for x, r sine theta for y. So let's do that for these two problems here. Um, I have a point in polar coordinates, so this is described as r theta. What I want is x comma y, and the link is r cosine theta and r sine theta. So x I know is r cosine theta, which means it's 2 cosine of pi over 3, 
And what's cosine of pi over 3? It's 1 half. That means x is equal to 1. So y then would be our sine theta to sine pi over 3. What's sine of pi over 3? Root 3. So this is just going to be root 3. So my coordinate in x in rectangular form is 1 comma root 3. Okay? And you can leave it like that or convert it to decimals. Either way is fine. Um, look for what is specified. All right. So look at this one. x is equal to negative 5 sine 45. And what's y equal to? Oh, yeah. And this is sine 45. But this should have been cosine. Right? Now, what's the angle here? 45 degrees. Now, if you have a 45 degree angle, right, then if this is 45 degrees, then you know that the y and the x must be equal to each other. And you can see here that they are going to be equal to each other, right? So here we're going to have negative um, 5 radical 2 over 2, negative 5 root 2 over 2. All right. Now, how do we convert? Um, so we just converted polar to rectangular. How do we convert rectangular to polar coordinates? Okay. Now, if you know x and y, how would you find r? Pythagorean theorem. So r is equal to x squared plus y squared. And we did this in the last chapter in... Um, for vectors, if I have the y component and I have the x component and I want to find the angle, what would I do? Inverse tangent of y over x. So these are the two relationships that I'm going to use if I want to convert rectangular to polar. Okay. Now it's a little bit different here because you have the ability to get more than one answer. Okay. So here what we have is x and y, and what we want is r theta. All right. Our first relationship is that r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, which means r is equal to the square root of 4 plus 16. So r is the square root of 20, which is 2 root 5. And it says to round to the nearest hundredth, so this is just 4.47. Now, what our instructions say here is to find two pairs of polar coordinates for each. All right? Now, you know that the radius is just a fixed radius. That can't change. But the angle through which you rotate, remember you have, you know, the possibility of um, rotating, right? So... Um, where is this? Let's just sketch where 2 and 4 is. So you go 2 on the x and 4 on the y in the negative direction. So this is where my point is, or e rather. Okay? All right. So let's find the angle now. Tangent of theta is equal to what? Negative 4 over 2, right? So theta is the inverse tangent of negative 2. And how much would that be if you plug it into your calculator? In radian. Let, let's go in radian. So negative 1.11 is what you get. Okay? We are working in radian. Now look. Um, let's just recall what this radian business is, right? This is 0 and this is pi. And this is pi over 2. Now, pi is 3.14. That means pi over 2 is 1.57. Is that correct? And if you go in the negative direction, then this is 0. This is negative 1.57. This is negative 3.14. Right? That's how that works. So now if I'm at negative 1.11, this is where I am. Right? Why 
say that again? I'm just plotting where negative 1.11 is. Well, it's negative 1.11 radian. It's like if I said 3.14, I know that that's pi. So I've went, I've gone um, like a full semicircle. Right, right, because 63 degrees is the same, um, it's the same portion as of the 180 as 1.11 is of the 3.14. You see what I mean? Correct this. All right, so now it says they'll find two pairs. Now, my angle is here, right, 2 and negative 4. This is where my point is. Um, so one possibility of the angle is theta equals this. What's another possibility? So what if, right, 6.28 minus that. So or 6.28 minus 1.11, how much is that? 5.17. So my Two possibilities then are 4.47, negative 1.11, and 4.47, 5.17. Okay? Any questions? That's the radius. Okay, so let's do another one, and then I'll, uh, I'll take more questions if there are. So let's do one more. Now I have 1 comma negative 3. All right, so 1 comma negative 3. First I want to find the radius. That's just x squared plus y squared, so it's 1 plus root 3 squared, which is how much? At the end of the day, it's 2. Now for my theta, it's the inverse tangent of negative root 3. Okay. Now, again, which quadrant is this angle in? Uh, is this uh, point in? 4th, right? Because I go to the right, uh, to the left one and down. Plot 1 and negative root 3. Where would that take you? 4th quadrant. So what is theta then? Negative 1.04, right? Yeah? Or 6.28 minus 1.04, how much is that? 5.2. Depends on um, how soon you round it. If I want to be consistent, I could do 5.24. So my two um, points are 2 and negative 1.04, 2 and 5.24. All right, questions? No. Okay. All right, um, so look at this. Here's another um, way we can mesh polar and rectangular. All right, so I have a rectangular equation here, right? And immediately when you see that equation, you should be able to recognize that that's an equation of a what? X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. This is a, this is a circle with a radius of 3. And if I graph this, this is a circle with a radius of 1, 2, 3. Now, what about this polar equation? This polar equation, r equals 3. We graphed that on the quiz. That's a circle with a radius of 3. So what do you see? This equation in rectangular form and this equation in polar form are the same thing. They graph the same shape. Okay? Um, another example is, look at this rectangular equation here. 2x minus 3y is equal to 6. You know that that's a linear equation. All right? And um, if you 
change that to y equals blah, 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 and you graph it, that's what it looks like. Well, it turns out this polar equation also graphs that same line, okay? So what we're going to do next is we're going to try to, not try, we're going to succeed in converting equations from rectangular to polar and vice versa. So let's do our very, very first one. You'll see that it's a lot more like straightforward than I, um, than you feel. Okay, so here, here is a, the first one going from rectangular to polar. This is more straightforward than the other uh, case. So what you do is this, you replace x with r cosine theta, y with r sine theta, and then you just simplify, okay? Very easy, simple. Well, straightforward anyway, okay? So here it says identify the graph of each rectangular equation. Some you may be able to, some not. <laughs> then write the equation in polar form. All right, so if I just take a look at this one, I have an x squared plus a y squared equals a 4. This, again, is a circle. It's an ellipse when these are divided by a and b, which are not equal. So, for example, if there was a 4 here and a 9 here, that's when it would be a circle, uh, an ellipse, and this would be a 1. Um, but this is a circle. Okay, so let's see then. We're going to substitute r cosine theta for x and r sine theta for y. So let's just go ahead and do that. So here we have r cosine theta plus 2 squared plus r sine theta squared equals 4. We distribute, we simplify, so on and so forth. I have here r squared cosine squared theta plus 4r cosine theta plus 4 plus r squared sine squared theta equals 4. Everybody with me? Where I'm just squaring, okay? I'm squaring. So now always look for a sine squared theta and a cosine squared theta. You're going to have to use, look, you're going to have to use algebraic manipulations, trig identities. Are we walking around the classroom? Is this what's happening? Um, so here, look at this one. I'm going to factor out an r squared cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta plus what do I have left? 4r cosine theta plus 4 equals 4. Okay? Now, what's all this? 1. And the, these 4s go away. Yes? So now I have r squared plus 4r cosine theta is equal to 0. Now, I have to get this in the form of like r equals something, okay? So what I'm going to do is this. r squared is equal to negative 4r cosine theta. Can I cancel out an r from both sides? Why not? Yes? Okay, so now I have r is equal to negative 4 cosine theta. And now, now, what shape is this? This is a circle. This is a circle, right? Remember that form I gave you, that little sheet I gave you? This is a circle. Now, that number 4, I, that number 4 tells us what? The radius is 4. But what does the negative do? It brings it to the left. I mean, the whatever this is, the left, yes. So the negative, this is a reflection around the axis theta equals pi over 2. Okay? That's how you make yourself sound sophisticated at the math party. All right? So... Reflection around theta equals pi over 2. So when you graph this, okay, it's here to here, right? That's four units, okay? 
And um, if you want to, you know, like put in another point here, like at 2 pi over 3, for example, you want to know what the point is, just plot in another point. You can do that. 4 cosine 2 pi over 3. Well, negative 4 cosine 2 pi over 3. That's what? That's a 2. So at 2 pi over 3, we're at a 2. You can mirror that point here, you know, so you can put more points on the graph. So finally, that's what that circle looks like. Okay? Cosine, you mean? Okay, um, so this is a circle with a radius 4. Now look, if you looked at this from the, um, of the rectangular equation, you can, from the equation, you can figure out what the center is, right? What's the center of this? Right, the center is negative 2, comma, 0. Negative 2, comma, 0. 1, 2. Do you see that? Like, come on, you can't, you can't say it's totally beautiful. Okay, it's, it's totally beautiful. All right, so look at this one. We're going to do the same thing. Um, 2 times x, meaning 2r cosine theta, times y, r sine theta, is equal to 4. Um, so, okay, all right. Now look, I'm going to collect the r squares. How do you know to do this? I'm telling you, and you will look, know how to look for it next time, right? So this is 2r squared cosine theta sine theta equals 4. But wait, what if I write it a different way? What if I write it like this? r squared times 2 sine theta cosine theta. What did I do? Just rearranged the r and the 2 and the sine and the cosine. But what do I have here, people? What is this? Where have we like seen that, 2 sine theta, cosine theta? It's like the It's cosine. It's sine. Sine 2 theta. Of course. You knew that. Mm hmm Okay. That means that r squared is equal to 4 over sine 2 theta. That means that r squared is equal to 4 cosecant 2 theta. Okay? And now, um, no. This is an r squared, and it's a cosecant. Um, let's let's plot it. Let's uh, let's graph it on the calculator. Um, it's well, it is going to have two because you have an r squared. So no, it's it's not on the it's not on there. So um, it's going to be radian. So 4 cosecant, how do we do cosecant? So 4 over sine 2 theta. Okay, listen. I'm going to I'm going to show you something. Um Well, because it's r squared equals 4 cosecant 2 theta, which means r is positive, the square root, and the negative square root. Now, to do the negative version, right, you can go ahead and listen. You really want to listen to this. You can go ahead and retype the entire thing, but there is a shortcut because what I want is the negative of this r1, right? So what I can do is this. Watch now. Variables. Okay, if you press the left arrow button, or the right arrow button rather, that's the Y variables button. 
Now, I'm not working in function mode or in parametric mode. I'm working in polar mode. Enter. Now, which variable do you want? R1. R1. So the negative of R1 is what I'm going to graph there. Okay? It is a beautiful, beautiful little thing. Okay, so now we're going to graph this. So we put in our graph, uh, we put in our equation, it's 4 cosecant 2 theta, meaning 4 over sine 2 theta, the square root and the negative square root. Now, I'm in radian and my window goes from 0 to 2 pi. And to do this, I literally, I type in 2 pi, enter, okay? And then when you graph, this is what your graph looks like, okay? This is what we call a hyperbola. You've done it in conics. Uh, and we'll, some of you have and some of you haven't, but we'll touch upon it again this year. Uh, so for now, we're going to graph it this way. Now, if you, those of you who did do conic sections last year um, you know what the equation of a hyperbola looked like but basically this is the, that, that's what this looks like here alright so let's do the next one before I run out of time alright so here we have y which is r sine theta is equal to co, um, x squared r cosine theta and it's everything squared. Now, the important thing here is this. Um, I'm, I've given you here three different situations. Um, and when you get a homework problem, you're going to have to do this as your first step and then try to go back and see what I did with the different, like, w try to mimic what I've done. Okay? So here we have our sine theta is equal to cosine theta squared. You can cancel one R from each side. So I have R equal to, now I divide by cosine squared theta on both sides. So R is equal to sine over cosine squared theta. Yeah, well, I mean, for the, yes, you can keep it on radian. Okay, so now this is sine theta over cosine theta times 1 over cosine theta. Remember what we did in the trig identities chapter is, you know, sometimes it was necessary, I mean, it was helpful to split things up. Um, we do the same thing here. So we have tangent theta, secant theta is equal to R. Now, if you look at this equation, what is that the equation of? Y equals X squared. What is that the equation of? Parabola, right? That's a quadratic equation. That's a parabola. So um, if you graph that, now we have tangent of theta. So tangent of theta. I'm going to put it in uh, parentheses. Times 1 over cosine of theta. No. All right. Do you see that? So we're going to have to copy that over here. Yeah. All 
All right, let's do the next ones. Now here we have to go from polar to rectangular. In this case, we're going to have to use these relationships, x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, tangent of theta is y over x. Um, this case is not as straightforward as going from rectangular to polar. So look at how this works. Um, so the first one is theta equals pi over 4. When all you have is theta, go with the tangent, all right? So what I'm going to do is take the tangent of both sides. Now, look at theta equals pi over 4. Remember we graphed this in section 2. What type of a graph do you get when you graph theta equals pi over 4? You get a line. Right. So let, let's see if the rectangular coordinate is going to, the rectangular equation is going to match that. Now, um, so this is tangent of theta is equal to, what's tangent of pi over 4? 1. No. Right, so in this case, um, this, you have to plug in your x and your y, right? So you have to square the two sides of this. So you get r squared is equal to 49. Well, what's r squared? x squared plus y squared is equal to 49, right? And that's a circle with a radius of 7. Show me as much as you possibly can. So if that's 2, 4, 6, then 7 is this. Whoa. That was on your yeah. All right. This last one, let me run you through this last one. Okay. So you have r equals something sine theta. What we do is multiply both sides by r. Why? I'll tell you now. So now we get, because we want an r squared, first of all, is equal to, now we have negative 5r sine theta, okay? Now, what's r squared? It's x squared plus y squared equals negative 5. Now, what's r sine theta? Y, okay? So what I have now is x squared plus y squared plus 5y is equal to 0. Now, this is good enough for your equation. But what type of equation is this? To figure out what kind of an equation this is, you have to complete the square. So let's complete the square. Y squared. Let's complete the square. Um, so here we have x squared plus, you combine the y's, it's y squared plus 5y plus a number equals um, a number, right? Zero plus a number. So what number am I going to add there? Five divided by two squared. All right, so that's 6.25. The reason why I did that is because now I have x squared plus, now I can factor this, right, as a sum of squares. So it's um, a, as a, a plus b squared. So it's y plus 2.5 squared is equal to 6.25. So now is it more clear what kind of an equation this is? This is the equation of a what? This is an equation of a circle with a circle with a radius of um, 2.5, and what's the center? 2. 2. 2. 2. It's 0 and 
negative 2.5. Huh? Um, R is, because it goes a maximum of 5. All right, but now look at this one. We had R equals negative 5 sine theta. We know that that's a circle with a radius of 5. I'm sorry, with a diameter of 5, right? And the negative here is a reflection around the x-axis or the polar axis. So this is going to be a circle like this, okay, where this is 5, okay? Oops. All right, so here we take the tangent of both sides, and now tangent of theta is equal to tangent of pi over 4, which is just 1. Now, tangent of theta is y over x, which is equal to 1, meaning y is equal to x. So All right? Here. Right. So it's the line pi, um, y equals x, which looks like that. Okay? So that's this one. Now, for homework, which is going to be due next time, you're going to have a lot of this. Um, you're going to have to use a lot of your trig identities. Okay? So, um, yes. Um, so, you know, there are ones, for example, that is um, a function divided by another function. You know, try to think outside the box and how you could, you know, separate one trig function from another and so on and so forth.